Hi folks, Dave here. So in this video I'm going to answer some questions I got about this inverter and specifically about inverters that appear to have a hardwire capability, that's a terminal block on the front, and whether or not they truly can be wired into a load center or a breaker panel. And in this video I'm going to very quickly show you with some very low-tech methods how you can check an inverter like this and see is it hardwire capable. And also I will show you how to check this kind of inverter or any inverter to see whether it will blow up if you connect it to a load center because some of them will. This is the 3500 watt Vever PureSign inverter. I did a hardcore stress test on this inverter and that video is linked down below. This inverter survived the test and so I'm going to be installing it in my new solar workshop as soon as I can get there. So this inverter has a terminal block on the front with three wires coming out. And on the previous video I had some folks asking about this block and asking me to measure the voltages on there. Is this thing hardwire capable or not? Now you can see I put a bit of tape over the top of the inverter terminal block in order to protect my fingers because it's very easy to touch these wires when it's in operation. And make sure the inverter's off. You can see how close my fingers are. You should really wear gloves when you're doing this. As you can see, this inverter has an L, an N, and some kind of symbol in the middle. This is supposed to be live. That's supposed to be neutral. The symbol in the middle means ground, protective earth, or earth ground. However, that is not ground and that is not protective earth. So while you're watching this, also be thinking about why would I say that isn't ground and that isn't earth. Now you can use a multimeter. Here's a very basic uh, digital multimeter and it doesn't need to be fancy or expensive. On the previous video, I had a few folks um, asking me to measure with a multimeter across these terminals. And just to humor them, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna cut to the chase after that. I'm gonna show you what you actually need to do. I have wired this inverter to a 12 volt battery. There's nothing else connected to it, just a 12 volt battery. So the first thing we're gonna check is whether this inverter is bonded or not. Is this inverter bonded? And how do we determine that? Bonded means that internally inside this inverter, this terminal in the middle is actually shorted together with the end. So they are basically the same potential. They're shorted out. And so that's actually very important if you're going to connect it to a load center that already has neutral and ground bonded. You don't really want to connect this inverter without breaking that bond. However, I seriously doubt this inverter is bonded, but let's find out. I've put my meter on 200,000 ohms. Just arbitrarily, we'll see what happens. And I'm going to probe between what's labeled as ground and what's labeled as neutral. And basically I get nothing. So that's actually correct. This inverter isn't bonded because if it was, I would see a connection between those two terminals and it'd be very low resistance. It would basically be like a short circuit because, well, it is. So this inverter clearly is not bonded internally, but I checked anyway, and it's good to do your own homework. DIY is about thinking for yourself. That's true DIY. If you're not thinking for yourself, you're not doing it yourself. Somebody else is doing it for you. Now I'm going to switch my multimeter to AC 200 volts. Now this is in the United States of America, and we use 110 and 120 volts. So I'm going to change the multimeter to 200 volts AC. Now, of course, some of this information is applicable to people in Europe and other places in the world. So, of course, you would want to change to 500 volts because your inverter probably puts out 230, 240 volts AC. Okay, so it's set to zero. The meter has zeroed itself out. If you want to learn more about using a multimeter, I use this very meter to make a very nice video about multimeter intermediate to advanced. And I highly recommend you watch that. If you don't understand why I'm selecting these items, go ahead and watch that video and it'll give you a nice foundation for learning how to use this instrument. A digital multimeter is one of the most powerful instruments a DIYer can ever use. And if you know how to use it, even the basic functions, it'll pay you back the rest of your life. I'm going to put the meter right here where you can see it. Now what I'm going to do is power on the inverter. Now I'm going to take my probes, and you probably should wear gloves if you're not comfortable. I've been doing this for years, so I'm not going to wear gloves. So let's go ahead and measure between L and N, and I should get 120 volts. And I'm using one hand to do that, and I'm getting about 120 volts, as you can see. Now let's measure between N, or neutral, and the ground symbol. And I'm not getting anything there, so I'm not getting anything between what is labeled ground and neutral, and I'm not getting anything between what is labeled live and ground. However, that's not the end of the story, and this is why you have to do your own research. Why is it showing zero? Well, let's try a different meter. Here's the original Gochi Fix 3-in-1 meter. I did a video on this as well that's linked in the description. This one I'm going to set it to AC voltage. There we go. Now let's do the same test. Hope you can see that meter there. It's getting stray readings. That's why you're seeing the numbers there. If I short the leads, it'll zero out. 
So let's do the same test. Let's measure between live and neutral. 120 volts AC, okay. Now let's lift one probe and let's measure between live and ground. And you can see I'm getting 24 volts AC, according to this meter anyway. Isn't that strange? The last meter said I was getting nothing. So let's do the same test on the middle terminal again, which is labeled as ground. And let's measure between ground and neutral. Again, we're getting about 24 volts AC, according to this meter. Why is that? Because there's several different things going on here. And this is a reason why you really need to slow down and pay attention and do your own independent research. Don't let a popular figure with a lot of followers do your thinking for you. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you the knowledge and the information you need so you can upgrade your safety skills. It's called knowledge building. We're going to build knowledge. But you don't go running out and start hooking up wires. Just because you saw a video on the internet does not make you an expert. So I recommend that you go out and study papers and documentation related to this subject. Not necessarily on YouTube, but on the internet and in books. In other words, college books, things like that. Yes, it doesn't sound like fun, but neither is electrocuting yourself. In a future video, part two of this video, I'm going to hardwire this inverter into my load center and or my breaker panel in my new solar workshop, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. But this is part one. Let's focus on these terminals. So this meter here is far more complicated, expensive, and sophisticated than this meter. This meter here is able to pick up stray voltage, including capacitance and inductive effects. This inverter is full of switching circuits. It's full of capacitors, it's full of inductors. This whole thing, this whole machine is based off of switching inductance and capacitance. So it's no surprise that if you start poking around inside the inverter and on these terminals, you will get odd voltage readings. Some meters pick them up, some meters don't. You may get different readouts. An oscilloscope can be helpful in determining what you're seeing, but in this case, I just have these meters. And you can see how this meter here acts totally different than this one here. Well, this meter here also costs a lot more than this one. This is a pretty sophisticated meter. Now you can see how much more sensitive this meter is. It's picking up all kinds of stuff in the millivolt range. And this meter is sort of just sitting there because it's on a 200 volt range. But still, no matter what range they're on, this is a much more sensitive meter. It's going to give you a lot more activity on, on the dial than you otherwise would get with a cheaper meter. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy an expensive meter. This type of meter works just fine if you know what you're doing and you're aware of the pitfalls. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Since I'm reading voltage between live and ground and ground and neutral, by the way, that's not ground, it's not protective earth, but I'm going to call it that because that's what it's labeled. But I'm letting you know that isn't ground. If I have voltage, say 20 to 60 volts between live and ground, does that mean this inverter is going to blow up when I connect it to my load center or breaker panel? Well, that's actually a very common scenario. However, in this case, I don't think that's going to happen. What if you have an inverter similar to this and it has a terminal block on the front and you don't know whether you can hook it up to your load center or your breaker panel? What if you're afraid you're going to blow the inverter up? Well, that's a very valid concern. Here's a simple test you can use to determine if your inverter is going to blow up or not when you connect it to your load center or breaker panel. Funny enough, you don't even need a meter. It's so simple and so low tech, you're going to laugh. Don't feel like using a high tech multimeter with a digital readout to do your tests. You want to use something low tech, something dirt simple, something that's grid down friendly and not vulnerable to EMP attacks. Well, I'm going to show you something. It's called a light bulb. That's a 40 watt light bulb in a ceramic screw base, and I have two alligator clips connected to it. Now this is quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So if you're not sure, wait and partner up with somebody who has the experience, maybe an electrician or somebody who's an electrical engineer and has knowledge. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I've been doing it for years and I know what I'm doing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the inverter off. I don't wanna to look too dangerous on YouTube. And I'm gonna connect the yellow clip to neutral. And I'm gonna connect the black one to live. The polarity doesn't matter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the inverter. And you can see the bulb glows. Let's turn the inverter off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift one of these terminals. I'm going to connect between neutral and ground. That's what it's labeled as on the inverter. Turn the inverter on. Absolutely nothing. The bulb does not glow. Let's turn it off. Let's connect between live and ground. I'm not going to blow the inverter up this way because the bulb has a very high resistance. And of course, it starts out very low resistance, but only for a microsecond and then it's high resistance. So that's why a light bulb is so useful. It's very low tech. And 
this bulb is not going to blow the inverter up. It can't because it's not going to draw enough current between neutral and ground. If this inverter had a live neutral configuration, meaning it was putting out power and current across neutral and ground, then it would instantly explode when connected to a bonded load center or breaker panel. If I hook a light bulb across neutral and ground and turn it on and the light bulb lights, at least I didn't blow my inverter up, right? And as you can see, it does absolutely nothing. And that's because this inverter does not have a live neutral configuration and it's perfectly safe for hard wiring. So this inverter is not feeding voltage between neutral and ground. Now, why did I say earlier that that isn't ground? This inverter is floating. It has no connection to ground or protective earth. It's just sitting on a workbench with a battery and it's got an inverter here and there's two wires powering the inverter. That's it. There isn't anything else. And so there is no ground. Actually, that middle terminal with the ground symbol above it is not ground and it's not protective earth. That middle terminal is there so that you, the installer, can supply a protective earth or ground to the inverter, not coming from the inverter. So you would be supplying protective earth to the inverter. So live and neutral are outputs, but actually ground is an input. Now in part two of this video, I'm gonna be installing this inverter in my new solar workshop. Hopefully it'll do just fine. We're gonna have a load center, breaker panel, all that good stuff. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what I do to safely connect this inverter to my workshop where I don't get electrocuted. And obviously I don't wanna electrocute anybody else. So it needs to be a safe, professional install with everything just right. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and a comment if you have time. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.